theatres should be saved, of course, and more should be born and supported and grown, of course. But it seems to me that when I scroll through the shouty firehose of social media, all the people talking about hashtag saving the arts are mostly talking about saving theatres. And this worries me. I'm an artist. It's all I've done all my adult life, and I've had the glorious privilege of working in a lot of spectacular and beautiful theatres. Red velvet seated gilt balcony bloody palaces. And it always feels amazing to be allowed to step onto those stages. But I've had just as good, sometimes better times elsewhere. In dark basement cabaret clubs where the heat from the audience condenses on the ceiling and drips onto the stage. Where the raw energy from a great crowd at a great gig can feel like a rough loving hug. Where you're all close enough to be in every sense in the same place. Variety venues all across Europe where fans of my art form make sure to get there early and grab the front row seats. They clap and ooh at the tricks and they laugh at my deliberate mangling of their language. And then afterwards they share their wine and snacks. These gigs, by the way, that I've worked a lifetime to be considered good enough to do, but now post-Brexit will be largely off the table for me. So thanks for that. Festivals all over the world where for a long weekend a small town brigadoons out of the ether, full of artists of every possible description, giving wandering punters the beautiful surprise of seeing something they did not plan for but might not forget. And streets, literal streets, where I learned the majority of what I do from stagecraft to timing to work ethic to professionalism to every aspect of the arts industry where I spent nearly two decades, day in, day out, performing to the most diverse audiences you could wish for. The kind of diverse audiences most theatres would kill for. Honing, polishing, suffering setbacks, learning lessons and becoming what I am. Yes, save all the theatres and the art centres and the cabaret venues and the dive bars with the stage in the corner and the festivals and the street pitches. But as you're doing that, Make sure you save the artists too, because you're going to want something to put in those venues. Now, if all you want from the arts is made by Cameron Mackintosh, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Disney, then you don't need to worry. They could all be in lockdown for another decade and still roll up to their eventual opening night in a diamond-studded Rolls Royce. But if you think the arts benefits from being a wide variety of art forms and disciplines, created by people from an even wider variety of backgrounds, genders, orientations and identifications, so that it tells stories from places you've never thought about, shows you treasures you didn't know existed, and makes your mind and soul twist and tumble inside you so that you feel new things, so that you leave different to how you went in. Well, those people are for the most part very much not millionaires. Those are the people who, right now, are lost and confused and scared and broke. It's really hard to sing or paint or dance or sculpt or juggle if you're preoccupied with being hungry or getting evicted. So I'm not even really sure what I'm trying to say with this video, except that yes, of course, theatres are wonderful and precious and essential and must be saved. But when you do save them, unless you want them to just be filled with ex-soap stars in murder mysteries, jukebox musicals and tribute bands, well then take the advice of this artist whose venue from his teens to his thirties often got rained on. Support and fund the people that make new stuff or there won't be any new stuff. Thanks. <laughs>